right? <laughs> Price needs to push up and deal with, you know, the imbalance or or in the order block that caused the break. So if this is the thing that right? if we don't, if you don't believe in the concept, you're not going to be able to, to take the trade, right? I believe in the concept and I still didn't have the uh, the intestinal fortitude to hold the trade on the buyout. So it's it's belief in concept, a proof of concept, and it's also your your psychology as a trader. Does that make sense? Yes. So if you see it on the chart, you know, and I have conversations with a uh, with a couple of of people, you know, about this GN trade. You know, if you see it on the chart, um, you, you know, we don't have to second and third guess it. We when we see it on the chart, we kind of understand that it's true. Like this is not happening right here. Did anybody have any questions over that over that uh EJ trade? I don't even know if anybody was in it, but I'm sure uh, probably several JPY pairs are the same thing. Okay, so let me explain what I see with this GN trade because this is the trade that I've I've been in, you know, and I was waiting. Everything was working perfectly. I here's what I expected. I expected the market to open up. Um, I expected the market to push up to take care of of. The imbalances here's the here's the uh fifty percent here's the seventy eight so I expect that we push up to this level and then sell down so the market pushes up and automatically pushes down but it doesn't break my low it gives me a double bottom which is awesome then we get the push up that broke this high this was my trigger to get into the market the market pulls back I hop in we go up and last night, you know, during London session, the market pushes up. I'm in great profit. Then it pulls back. <laughs> and, uh, you know, at first it wasn't a big deal to me. But, but this candle, this 2 a.m. candle just keep kept pushing down. And I said, oh, that, you know, when I saw the wick, I'm like, this is not good. You know. So I closed this trade out so somewhere up in this area. Uh, somewhere before, yeah, it, it, I think about 74, I got out of this, 2174. And it's because I saw this long wick forming. And what I did was look at GA, right? Which was, it was a, a better example to me because it had already cleared the top. And uh, I looked at EA and I said, man, um, When I when I looked at GA and EA, it was the 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 stop run was was more clear for me, right? Because this comes down, consolidates, wicks out, and then breaks this low. But um, for for my GN trade, it wasn't as clear. I couldn't see it as clear. Um, let me go back to the GN, GBP, NZD. GBP, NZD. Okay. So it, it just wasn't as clear. I couldn't see it as clear on this chart. But when I did see it, I got out of the freaking trade, right? Now, what I should have done is open up the sale. But I, I honestly didn't know if we were just going to sell to the moving average or if it was going to keep pushing. Um. But when I saw the wick, I should have known that we're going to go to the other side of the market. I, I, I tell you all that all the time. Um, but I didn't. I just watched it. And eventually it got down here and it wicked the bottom. And once it wicked the bottom, once I saw this wick and it was pulling back up, this I got in for the, for the buy. Right. So I got a great position for the buy. It eventually pushed back up. What is it going to do? Right. What is this trade going to do? Anybody? It should begin to start selling. Right, but everybody should know that. Just like I have a 
this chalk, right? This is a chalk right here because it broke this high. You got to do the same thing on the other side. This is this is the swing low for the trade. This is what validates the buy, right? Price can't violate this swing low. This swing low is, is my validation point for the buy up. Now, once we wick this high and it came down and, and took out my swing low, I can assume, um, and this is how this is how we all have to, to view the price. If we have the impulse move that breaks a swing low, guys, we get a 78.6 retracement, and then we get the hell out of Dodge, right? That that's that's how we have to view it as traders. It doesn't matter the time frame. This could be on a two week and could be on a six month. This happens to be on the one hour or, you know, if you want to drop down to the 15 minute, we can do that too. This is why we as traders have to know where our, our key marks on our chart. If this is my swing low, right? And I know it doesn't look like a swing low on the 15 minute. It looks like a double bottom but we just got off the four hour, right? And the four hour, this was my swing low. Uh, coming into the week, this was the marker. We pushed down to it. We didn't go through it, right? This is on Sunday. Look at that date, Sunday, 2100. We pushed down to it. One in the morning, we pushed up. We gave us, we broke this high, which gives us our chalk. We pulled back, gave us a great entry. We was in the trade. We was way up here, right? And then the trade pulled back on us. So I knew that this was my swing low. And as price went down there and broke my swing low, now I have to get off of my, my, my wanting to be right about this buy up. I don't care about being right. But I need to be able to read what's going on with the chart. So if you just show me that you broke this, the swing low, right? Now you're showing me that you want to go short. So all I do is I can buy it up to sell it, which is exactly what I did. Of course, I'm out of it now because I didn't hold it through the through the end of the market. But that all this is is a break of structure, a chalk, and a pullback. So I just bought the pullback. Now I needed to come up here. It would be great. I'm sure that's a 78. That that's what my market is on this chart. Um, This is the 62, here's the 78. So as soon as the price gets there, that line right there is to close the inbounds. So we'll be ready to ready to sell down. And, and here's the thing, guys. This, Leandra says she has her markings um, on this chart from, from last week. And I know I had my markings on the chart from last week because remember I drew, I drew this out for you? So here's the dip. Here's the wick of the previous candle. Here's the, the bearish order block. I, I thought that we push up first and push down. We didn't. We pushed up a, a, a minuscule amount. So maybe we're just going to push down the rest of the week, right? This, this zone, this shaded area was the 50% mark that we anticipated was going to happen from from this move from here to here or maybe it wasn't maybe it was from here to here okay there you go so this zone this this zone right here was from here to here we expected the market to pull back into the golden zone. And this line right here was the 78. You see that? Now, this shaded area represents a monthly uh, order block, right? This bullish order block for the monthly. So all we're waiting for is price to come tap into that monthly order block. So it still supports everything that we're trying to do all we, what's that 
Oh, I was talking to myself. I said, just didn't retrace. That's all. Right. With just that one piece, you know? So as long as we're able to follow the price, right? Like, okay, it's not, once I realize, okay, price is not going to give me the pullback up here. It's just going to push down now. I just had to recalibrate what I see. Once you show me that you broke my swing low, now I have to respect the fact that the market is telling me, Ty, we want to go lower. Ty, can I ask you a question? Just so say for instance, you had the buy-in, right? And you were doing this. Buy. Huh? I did have um, right. Say you so you got out of your buy. So say we are knowing that, and I didn't even look at the month. I had looked at the two weeks, so I knew. Um wait a minute. What's the two week again? It's a very short of block. Right. And the monthly is a bullish order block, right? Yeah. So if you had a, you know how you tell us to walk into our trade sometime. So mm -hmm. if we had a very small position in GN and we were basing this off of we know what the money is going to do. If we hedged it, right, and held that initial position, would that be would that be awful advice if you, since you walked into it and you're not in a position to be? Oh, it's not awful advice. Okay. It, 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 and and. You know, it's 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 just tricky when you have a funded account. It's tricky. Mm -hmm. If you have a personal account, it's not tricky at all. Right. It can be read for six months. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? Right. It's just your psychology as far as what you see read in your account. If you mm -hmm. understand the the logic behind those red numbers, then who cares? You know, I know some people. You know, uh, on YouTube, some 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 old white dudes that don't take losses. Mm -hmm. He don't. And and he only trades micros, but he's a millionaire. And uh, he said, man, you know, sometimes I, I take a bad position, but price to come back to it. And, it <laughs> as long as he, and he said, as long as he can add to his position going the opposite direction, it's, it more than makes up for that loss. And that's how it is in a personal account. I mean, I'm sure OG can, can attest, you know, sometimes you're going to get fooled, but you just go the other way. And if you understand how to read the structure, you know, especially on the larger time frames, then maybe you have to give up 150 pips going down in order to, for that weight for the market to turn around and come back up. But if you're in for two lots going up and it turns around and goes down, then maybe you just got to enter four lots going down and you're still going to make money. Even though that that two lot position is losing money, those four lots is making double. So yeah. it, it it's a... Uh, <laughs> who are the old white guys? Uh, I got it. He's on. I don't. Do you know who Etn is? Uh, Rosebud. Nope. So, uh, this Etn dude is. I don't really like him, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> he he runs this Desire to Trade podcast. Desire to Trade. Oh, I do know who that is because I yeah. I listen to his podcast sometimes. Yeah, uh, he 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 interviews a lot of old school traders. Um. A lot of those dudes, man, like uh, that that live in uh, in in Southeast Asia, they they've been trading for years and years. Like this dude, I think he lives in Denver. He he has an interesting. All these guys have interesting approach. They're not smart money guys. They've been trading a long time, and they're millionaires, man. Like, but they have a a set way of looking at things, right? Um, let me see if I can find the the dude I'm talking about. But uh, these these guys have years and years under their belt and they don't take losses. And, and you know, it helps their it helps their what do you call it? Uh, psychology, their trading psychology, because they don't you know, they know that that red is going to turn around and come back. So if you've been trading like you trade, you can. Right. And if you can't trades in the same range for three for the last three years. Chances are it's going to be in that that range for the next three years or for the next two years. So maybe it goes negative for a half of a year, but you're making money as it as it goes the opposite direction. Originally you wanted to buy it, but it starts selling. As long as you get enough positions on selling it, cancels out and and also puts you in the blue as it sells. You're not really going to concern yourself with how far in the red that 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 buy position goes. Because you're you're making money on the sale. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just 
had a crazy <laughs> that's a crazy call. so they yeah like they could have sell and buy positions just running and maybe like one goes in red and then two years later they come back to it and yes. it's like yes. okay I, now I, now it's a yes. profit let me close it out and collect this paycheck and then yes. two years or, later they're like let me get that one that i put a year ago that's yes. crazy yes it, guys it, it, basically <laughs> i'm that's exactly what i'm doing like yeah. I'm not, I, I haven't I haven't been what? doing it that long, but that's what I've created. Yeah, that makes sense, OG. Totally. Hey. Wow, that's dope. But you're kind of like on a on a more like a, a smaller time frame, or no? Are you holding? Well, are yeah, you open it's to according stuff? it's it's according to how long you've been doing it. So I've been doing it for a year now. Cool. That's cool. how I caught the gold trade, the Ethereum trade. It's all trapped. Euro, GBP, all that stuff is trapped. Exactly. It's it's That's really so crazy. crazy. You think about it, because it doesn't matter. Like it, we we have to make a profit, or we or you you can't go so far and draw down on your on your funded account, but on your real account, I mean, you still don't want to go and draw down, but you just want to keep be on the right side of the move. So right. Oh, you know. So I was trying to buy this. If I didn't want to to log the L, because we know it's going to buy, it's going to come down here. It's a bullish order block, right? It's a bullish order block. So I have a buy right here. I didn't have to close out if I was in my my, my personal account. I could have just let it go red as long as I put in some sales heavier than that buy, collect my sales down here. And then next week when price pushes back up, then those buys will eventually turn blue. So the goal is just never to close your red trades out and always have some blue trades. You know what I'm saying? It's it's genius. Technically, you could you can do the same thing on a funded account. You just have to hold your hedge in place until you put more trades in to mitigate that loss. But you don't yes. ever have to take that loss. You're, you're right. But the only bad part about your your funded account is you have a five percent limit, right? True. So. Every now and then you're going to get heavy with your with your crossover trades, right? And maybe when when like this time of day, it's it's not an accident that this trade uh is going to go from a buy to a sell during the market close. Because it's going to squeeze some people out. Some people aren't, some people are in a hedge. And this close, when they close the market and they open up the the what do they call it, the spread that spread is going to margin call people out the trade. It's This is part of the tactic. So some people who caught this buy and maybe had some sale trades, you know, they had some sales down here and they, and they got a buy, they're in profit on the buy, but maybe they sell trades a little bit heavier or whatever. Now, when they open up the spread, the spread is going to be open on your buys and your sales. So that's going to put some people over their margin limit. You know, the, the problem with traders is most, most traders don't go in with 0 0.01s. Most traders go in with a good portion of, of, their, of their margin, right? Their, their leverage. You know, the problem is <laughs> whenever the market gets you squeezed, right? Whether they short squeeze you or, or long squeeze you, you know, you know the, the the goal is to run your your leverage. I mean, Osprey Osprey has a board. You know, I'm sure they have a board. They know they know exactly how much how much leverage you're using and exactly how how much they got to open the spread to take you out. It's their I, job to make. I just had another uh, realization, Todd. So, how you were saying is that that you know people do that on their live accounts on their personal accounts but in a prop firm account you only have five percent yeah to work with that so i totally just understood this thing i listened to in a podcast the other day um and i didn't understand it at the time but this guy basically does what those traders do in their personal accounts but yeah. he does it with he has multiple prop firm accounts so instead of trading you know and trying to mitigate that loss in the same account and possibly hitting that five percent he goes to another account and does it and it's all like a net outcome and he rotates the accounts so they last longer that's what he said yeah i, I mean 
a lot of people do that. You know, you can't do that. Like if you have, if I have a, a IG account or, or what is a forex.com account in the United States, you know, I can't do that. If I got two accounts in the United States, I can't do that. That's illegal. To what? Take trades in a separate account? Or yeah. to hedge in separate accounts? To hedge with using separate accounts. Uh-huh. But is it with a prop firm? No, if, if you use a regulated U.S. broker, you can't do it. If you use a unregulated broker, you can do it. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can open and close positions out of sync. If you use a regulated broker, you can't do that. First, first to open, first to close. Like if you open three GM positions, the first one you open, you have to close it first. That's why I don't use US broker. <laughs> Me either. But you know, it's just, I I don't know why. I mean, the only reason that I can think of that we have those rules is just to to make sure, to make it very hard for us to make money. I believe it. And make it hard for us to lose their money. Right. Now, I've been doing that same thing in a demo and tra trapping price in US 30. Like when it went down, I got all the sales in. And then when it went up, I've, before it went up, I got my buys in. But then my sales were in negative until my buy when my buy went up i took profit at the highest point and then now my sales are continuously going down and they're in profit and i've got more sales which are going to be in profit i've just i've taken some off i'm even play some other extra trades here and there um like intraday and caught some good profits and taken those off or taking those off in buys, whichever way. And but my kept my longer term trades just running. And I, just, I really think it's gen it's it's genius to actually do it, right? Yeah, because I had a hundred a hundred thousand in the account. I like doubled it and then I lost it all. I don't know how. <laughs> 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 And I it's it probably that good to lose it all. It got, it got down to I think it's like 20, 20k, and then I thought, you know what, this will be a good challenge to just you know build this account back up again, um because US thirty looks like it's gonna do um a huge a huge sell to buy. So then, and then I thought I could just try it out on UJ, like do a few UJ trades on it as well, um and that's what I've been doing, just bringing it back to the. 100k and I I think I'm on like 70k at the moment um took a few L's um but I normally just put in when I my hands feel itchy I just put some trades in that account instead of putting on my um funded accounts which I should have done today but we won't talk about that but yeah it's it's um growing nicely but I do have a lot of negatives like I've got a lot of um UJ I've been placing a lot of UJ sells. UJ's not selling. <laughs> I should have exited those by now, but they're negative. Oh, but I've got a few UJ. I'm I'm actually trapping UJ at the moment. I've got a, tr a few UJ buys, which are in profit. And a, a few um gold trades as well, buy and sell. So it's looking good. Yeah, I, I think that uh if <laughs> Like if we, if you get to the point where you understand uh, price and how to read price on a higher time frame, you can put a small position to go the direction of the time of the higher time frame and you can trade, actively trade the lower time frame. And, you know, I think that's a great way to, to build accounts, you know, and you can start with 0 0.01 lot sizes, trade the direction of the trend. And then you use, you know, your your regular trading style, you know, to trade any any short term fluctuations. Yeah, most but, you know most of the trades on US thirty are 
zero point ones have gone. I haven't gone. The highest I've gone is zero point ten. Yeah, well, I think that you know most trades. Period. You know, until you until you get a little experience, are going to be zero ones on on the US thirty. But um, but I did those on the higher time frame, like what you're talking about. I took right. them. A time frame perspective instead of intraday trading them so i've just been holding them for the higher time frame you know looking at it from a what's it swing traders point of view right you know may I, and that might help whoever you know in the group because i i think that's that's probably um a way that that a lot of people don't don't look at it, at trading you know um but i think it'll work better for many of us you know um it's trading the lower time frames is is actually a lot harder than trading higher time frames. Mm. The lower time frames change, you know, pretty rapidly. Higher time frames don't change that rap rapidly, you know, because it takes longer times for the candles to print. So if if the market is going to go the opposite direction, you know, and you trade in a weekly chart, it's going to take a whole week. For it to go against you or for for the candle to print. You'll see it going against you before the candle finishes printing. All right, but uh what else are y'all trading? Um or or do y'all want uh help with or whatever? Who's having problems reading price action? Who doesn't understand how to look at swing highs and swing lows? Because at the end of the day, that's all you need to, to, <laughs> to, to understand. If you can understand where your swing highs and swing lows are, and you see, hey man, this swing high has been broken, I, I can't be looking for, for sales. Or hey man, the swing low has been broken, I can't be looking for, for buys. You know, if they break- in a quarter mile, turn left onto North Hamilton Road. Yeah, turn left on North Hamilton. But uh, <laughs> what's your question? <laughs> well, with GU, like if the dollar, if the dollar continues to go up, even though GU hasn't, um, like given us the the latest lower low, Road. with with um, like wouldn't it still operate with price like with the US dollar like when it's doesn't it still have an, an opportunity to to sell for a little longer well, let's talk about it. uh if you look at this 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 was a swing low they got broken um Monday August 22nd that told you from the monthly time frame that the market is gonna that, that GU is going to sell right Continue on North yeah. Hamilton Road for a half mile. Now, if you look at, I mean, this is a super high time frame. But when you when this started buying up, yeah. you could have put in a buy to take profit at this imbalance because this this imbalance is probably where that price is pushing up to to close the imbalance, right? Okay. Yeah. In a quarter of a mile. If we, move to a, a, if we move to a closer time frame and and we look at it from a from a closer position um if you if you're looking for your swing lows if price doesn't break this low right here then you treat it as a buy if price comes down and breaks this low then you can't look at it as a buy you look at it as it buy, it's buying up Hello? can you hear me what do you say? I said, if price breaks this low, then you can't look at this as a buy. I mean, uh, yeah, as a buy. Yeah, you, you have to look at it as a sell. Like, it's just going to buy up. Right onto course drive. It's just going to buy up to mitigate the imbalances and then sell down. Does that make sense? Yeah. So on the bigger... The bigger jumps. That's why I like. I would feel this move from here to here because this is about a seventy-eight percent. 
So you, you got to figure at some point right here, we're, we're in the sweet spot for the buy up. Even if it just buys to this shoulder, right? Can you see this head? In and 1, feet, turn right on Del Castle Drive. This buys up to this shoulder before it sells. That's that's still a pretty good drive, a, a pretty good buy. And this black line is a 78, which which would be right at the shoulder height. So that's a good a good buy. And then you just have to look and see if we if we buy up here and we break this swing, then we just pull back. 78% and go higher. So it's all about your swing highs and swing lows. You, you have to look and see what price is doing. If it's I'm right on the swing, drive. Or swing lows, then you need to you need to start trading with with the direction. Yeah. Anyone uh, hundred feet turn right onto Tournament Avenue. Where are you at? I never heard. I never heard of Tournament Avenue. <laughs> you know, I lived there. I'm in New Albany. New Albany. Okay. Turn right onto Tournament Avenue. Oh, I lived in. I lived in Black Lake, so I, I, it wasn't that far from New Albany. Oh yeah, I'm in the neighborhood. Some neighborhood. I don't even know. In 600 feet, turn right onto Highlander Drive. But I was trying to see like. Uh, for this week, like I did, I did take the majority of my profit for GU, then your destination will be and then I just have a runner. But, yeah, uh, would you have profit for GU? I mean, yeah. <laughs> has it been moving that much? So from from um from when I from when I took the sale, I I did. I mean, I got a little bit of profit. Oh, put some money in my. Pocket. Yeah, because it's, it's going to go back up. Yeah, that was from the sale. That was from what Nor uh, Norwalk called out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I, you know, I really didn't want to trade the dollar this week because of, I, I knew the CPI was going to be dominant. Um, maybe maybe we'll get a big move after after the uh, PPI. But I think we're going to get one move tomorrow and then PPI will hit and move it. Um, they, they had a weekly OB. OB. Yeah. So maybe we'll buy up and then we'll we'll push down. I don't know. But this, this I think this area is, is what I had marked up where price needed to tap in. Mm -hmm. so we'll see. That's right. Okay. Hopefully, GN will will give us a good sale tonight. You know, after all them pips it spilled out last week, now it's, it it want to be stingy. But you know, I I got them pretty good on that buy up today. I I would have got them very good on that on that buy last night, but I didn't know it was going to turn around. Have y'all found a, a way to? You know, you can you can put in like. Five positions to go twenty pips. And that's a hundred pips. But my, I'm, I'm okay. Let me go back. Let me rewind. Because if Ju is correlation, sometimes I just be stuck on the correlations. Because I'm like, you know, go broke the low on the on the four hour to six hour. Okay, you but, but, but y'all got to understand. Um, I use an OG word that prices are wavy. That yeah. means they don't all do the same thing at the same time. That's why you have to understand where your swing high is and your swing low on the pair that you're trading. Because just because gold is buying yeah. doesn't mean that GU is going to be buying at the same time. It could be four hours later before GU buys. It could be 12 hours later before GU buys. But if you... If so what's you, the point of caring about you saying? Huh? If it's going to do different things at different times, what's the point of caring about what the news is, is going to say? If they're going to, if well, the dollar is not going to move at the same time. Listen, I'm not saying that they both won't react to the news. But what I'm telling you is 
if you're if you're in the in that pair and you understand where your swing high and swing low is, then you know, hey man, you know, I need to be taking profit on buys or I need to be trapping price here, you know, based on that swing high or swing low being broken. The same way I showed you what happened in GN last night. You know, like it, it, it doesn't do me any good to be up watching the chart if I don't know how to react to to what price is doing on that chart. You know, like the benefit of me actually being me seeing that that high or that swing low being broken is I had time to react to it. That was the mm -hmm. benefit. But if, if I wasn't going to react to it, then who cares if I saw it or not? That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a gap on GU and so I do feel like that news could just would get lower to just show might. you like that's what that's where price wants to go and then continue on that the 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 structure by because it broke the four hour up. It, are, um Rose, you said it's halfway to your TP. You're buying it. I'm I'm a, I think I think we already saw it. You're buying it, right? And which yeah. which sense because there the imbalance well that, that imbalance has been mitigated but it can go still to that point um if you're looking at the y cough if you're looking at this y cough this is your change of character price needs to come up to this level this is where i would look because there's an order block right here at the top of your of your zone right here I mean, yeah, I'm I'm doing a 20 pip challenge. So as much as I would like to hold it up there, well, I'm, listen, out yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I don't want to get in nobody's uh nobody's way, you know. And and that's another thing that I was just talking about. Um, that 20 pip challenge. Uh, any 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 of these moves that we make, it's kind of wonky, honestly. The challenge, it's like. It's very interesting, honestly. Like, I don't know. Has anybody heard of anybody hitting level 30? Well, I have. I just heard yeah, of Yeah, because it's a set stop loss, and the stop loss is 15 pips, which is outrageous. 15 pips doesn't even cover that swing low. Well, I know, but that's that's why, to me, if you get 20 uh, uh 20 pips. If you get a move that's showing you 20 pips, then to me it's easy, it's easy to do it. I mean, it's not as like that that one dude was talking about on that five minute chart. I get it. But you don't necessarily have to to uh you got to use that lot size, but you can't, you don't necessarily have to refrain yourself to a, a five minute chart. Like you know how to yeah, hit. I'm you know how to hit. Yeah, I'm trading, I'm trading like normal. I'm just getting out at 20 pips or moving my stop loss. Um which the GU, I mean, those equal lows kind of freak me out, but there's a four hour gap like right there. So I knew my 20 pip rate was in that gap at least. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, bro, oh, yeah, you man. Can... four hour. What was that? I mean, you can still do the 20 pip. I'm, I'm sorry. I think that you can still do the 20 pip, um, the 20 pip thing, but just use, do it on a higher time frame. Like you don't have yeah. to Yeah. Yeah, I'm trading like because it's I'm easy. trading like normal. Are you in your personal account? I mean like yeah. it's normal. You only trade on uh, the low no, super low time I'm frame. A, no, I will I'll take an entry on a really low time frame if I have that opportunity, but I am a swing trader in today. So I'm like, yes, I can definitely get twenty pips out of these charts. Right. What level are you on? One. <laughs> well, you yeah, one. I already had a winning trade, but it was trades from last week that I took before I decided I was going to do it. So they weren't at the right lot size. So technically, I'm at one. Okay. But I'm yeah, I didn't. Yes, man. West on Highland Drive. Avenue. 
I'm trying to be really careful though because I don't want to do this to get all mixed up about my strategy. I'm sticking with my strategy. It's also a stop loss challenge, but I'm sticking with hedging. Um, so I'm putting my hedge at 15 pips. I, so I don't I think agree it will... it's a stop loss challenge. Me neither. But that's what people say on YouTube, I guess. Well, that, that I mean, they trade with stop loss. So, yeah. Yeah. But, it, you know, it, to, to me, the, the objective is 20 pips. Exactly. Yeah. And what? I think it, you you still would be very successful doing it like with the ratio. Like you can just do it with um, using point five percent, and just as you're as you trade normally, your intraday trading. Just when it instead of a hundred pips, just close out at twenty. Yep, that's the plan. Yeah, and with hedging, like I understand that you know it's not. I because of my hedge, I might not get the exact profit or the exact loss. So either way, I'm going and I'm trading with 30% of my balance. I think that's really just the main concept. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That 30% is gonna be something there. It's fatal. I mean <laughs> I don't look at MetaTrader. I look at it, but I don't look at it. And there's a reason for that. <laughs> I look at trading view. <laughs> I look at trading view. <laughs> 30 percent got that. <laughs> that sounds like, sound like them child support loans, boy. <laughs> Jesus, that's more than tax. 